Hello again. Back in 2012 I had purchased the CX540 on the right. I used this meter during one of the videos. On the left is a brand new EX540 that I just purchased. And when I received this meter it didn't work. You could turn it on but if you would touch the switch the meter would actually turn off or it would reset. The other thing I noticed is if you turned on the backlight it would actually flicker. As I started to disassemble this meter and do the repairs as I removed the back cover, one of the things I noticed was there was no shield on the back cover. So I dismantled the original meter, and sure enough, it had the shield. The other thing I noticed on this meter was there was a metal can that covers up some of the sensitive electronics. And that metal can was bent pretty badly. And the one that's on here is nice, sharp, crisp bends. There were a few other problems I noticed with this meter. There's a couple of star washers that fit underneath the studs for the common and the milliamp. This new meter didn't contain those star washers. The original one did. Once I took the selector switch apart, I noticed that one of the contacts resting heights was a little bit lower than the other five and I used an exacto knife to thin down some of the plastic and that seems to have corrected that problem. Uh, the other thing I noticed was there's a C-clip that holds on the knob and that C-clip was very thick so this knob was actually very tight when I received the meter and I thinned down that C-clip and that seems to have really helped that problem uh, so this knob now feels as good as this one I made a couple of other mods to the meter while I had it apart there was some soldering issues with it and I've gone ahead and cleaned those up I put heat shrink tubing over the PTC's and over the high voltage resistors so once I started playing around with the meter I noticed this quirk and this original meter doesn't behave like this so I thought what I'd do is just show you how this meter behaves compared to this one so if I take our original meter and I select it to volts AC and you can see I don't have any leads on either one of these meters and you can see the meter reads zero volts and it's very solid at zero this meter on the other hand you can see it'll read about one millivolt and so it's 0.8 to, I've seen it as high as about 1.1 millivolt. That really has nothing to do with the input lead. So what I've got here is a 50 ohm terminator. I'm going to plug that across the two inputs. And I'm going to turn this over to volts AC. And we can see. Now, this is where it really gets interesting. On the left here I have a clock. Hopefully this shows up okay with the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to volts AC again. I'm going to leave the terminator attached. And I want you to watch the display. What's going to happen is about between 15 and 20 seconds, the meter is going to zero out. So there's 10 seconds. fifteen and there it drops so about twenty seconds and you notice it clears to zero and it'll stay like this now indefinitely if I remove our terminator you'll see it start to climb back up a little bit So you can see if I select both meters at DC volts, they both read zero volts roughly. Just fluctuating roughly 100 microvolts. In the millivolt range, you can see, you know, it's kind of varying around about 20 millivolts versus roughly 17 so they're within the same ballpark so I'd originally thought about running this meter across the transient generator once I uh, took it apart and I realized how poor the workmanship was and all the corrections that I had made to it I think it would really bias the test so maybe in the future I'll be using this meter for some of the comparisons one of the nice features with this meter is it's a tri display you can see I can display the max, the min, and the current value. 
If I select AC plus DC, I'll get the DC, the AC value, and the AC plus DC. So it's got some nice features that I do like about this meter. Again, I've had this one for quite a few years. This meter has actually survived a fair amount of abuse. If you turn these meters beyond the dead stop, it's very easy to crack the hex insert that the knob fits into in the selector switch. So you need to be very careful with this because the stops aren't really good on these. I loaned the meter out and the person I loaned it to actually did that by accident. So I was able to epoxy that switch and repair it. On this new meter, I put a star washer that just press fit over that shaft and then I epoxy the assembly up. I had taken some pictures as I'd gone through this meter. I placed those up on the EV blog site if you're interested. I'll provide the link. I think that's going to be it for this video. Till next time.